Today we're going over the fifth episode to show the thinnest Assassin's Creed blade that is true double action. So the goal there is you pull the string, it shoots out, it locks when it's out so you can stab things, you pull the string again, it's gonna shoot in, and that's gonna repeat forever. So the same pull action is gonna cause an alternating action on the blade itself. And it's based upon the same mechanism as my other one. This one's opened up here because I actually just filmed the description of how this operates, so I haven't reassembled it yet. But it's the same as my previous episode on the compliant based mechanism where Every string pull goes around a pulley, so both sliders go inwards on every pull of the string, and when you relax the string, they go out again. And that's the way that this operates. So the string pull is always identical, but that motion of the sliders causes the blade to alternate its position. I'm going to try to describe how this operates. Now, if you notice, we pull these together, that's how we're going to get the blade to eject. Oops, well, there it goes. All right, well, let me carefully pull this up. <laughs> so that's, I didn't have screws on here, that's why it was gonna act. A little bit strange, but let's go ahead and put this back together. Essentially, we have these two sliders, and they get pulled inwards. We also have these components that operate laterally. So this is identical in the Y direction. This side is the same as this side, and they operate exactly the same way. Once again, every time you pull the string, there's gonna be a cable around here. So every time you pull, we're gonna get this pinch action, like with my other compliant-based mechanism. So these will always go inwards and always go back out again on every single string pull. So the goal is that you have to allow these to slide right past the blade when they're not at the ends. So let's imagine that this is locked into the blade and this one's back here. As this one is pulled, it needs to be charging up energy because it's over the blade. I want to exert that energy on the blade back. However, this one, I don't want to bite into anything so it should move both pieces freely but this one should charge up energy to fire. This is accomplished because the top of this is actually part of the mechanism. So just like with the other compliant mechanism, we have these flex tabs that are bent down, and what these are gonna do is it's going to push down on this portion, and we notice there's a flex tab in here too. So these are gonna want to try to bite into the blade. What, oh, well, these are gonna try to bite into the blade whenever it's in the end positions. When it's in the end position, it's gonna to want to try to grab the blade. But if it moves inwards, it's not, because if I pull inwards, we notice that this is relaxed right now. Nothing is pushing it down, so the, it's flat down here, so the blade can fly past. However, if we look at the top and we notice those flex tabs, they would push down in the middle. And when it pushes down in the middle, we're gonna get these little guys right here come down, and that's what's gonna catch the blade. And they're angled, so it's actually gonna bite in harder against the blade, and it's gonna be able to put a lot of pressure on that. So we can put it back in here, and we can also notice that those little points, they will reach into the divots right here to pull the blade back. So what we've established is how this conditionally charges energy based upon where the blade is. So another key attribute about this cover is actually this feature right here, these little bumps that come downwards. These are gonna ensure that the blade doesn't bend upwards. They also have a little pin hole right here that allows a pin to go through here to hold them really strong in addition to the screws sideways so that this can't bend up so the blade cannot move upwards because those are reaching down, holding the blade from moving up and down. But they also do another thing. They also are a little angled block so the blade doesn't get caught on them and it's gonna guarantee that this doesn't go out too far. So when this pushes forwards and if these were in place, it would hit right against the part and it would keep this part from falling out. So that's also what this holds. There's also another nuanced little mechanic in here. If we look really close at this piece, we notice that this opens up right here. The reason this opens up is because the tab, if we look at them, the tabs face down so they could catch things going this way. So by having that little gap in this component, it allows this to push those down and then freely move over then depress to push these little clips down and then allow this to freely slide off of that ramp without getting caught on anything. So if this one was locked into the blade because the tab is pushing this down, it's holding this piece in place, this one moves freely charging up energy on the connected rubber band, but this one moves freely because it had no blade to latch onto and it was depressed by this. So both components are here in the middle, but this is charged. Remember that this rubber band would be connected, of course. Once we reach this trigger distance and it reaches here, it's gonna pull those little arms that we just saw, unlock it and throw the blade back. We'll get to that in a second. So let's imagine that this just got unlocked. We're going to have the blade fly back and it's gonna fly right past this component. Let's clear these out of here. These were already replaced there. It flies right back and locks in place because remember, this guy is no longer depressed and so it can fly back. However, when this returns in position from the springs, 
This lock here is going to then push this down so it bites in and now we charge it up energy. Notice how it's charging energy now because it's locked by the depressed tab. And that angle bite is holding it there. So even if this wasn't here, it holds it as long as there's tension, which allows this to pull this through the blade for the length of the body here. So that's how that's accomplished. So now I'm putting those little flex tabs back in so we can see how those work because these are responsible for unlocking it at the right moment in the mechanism. So if this is locked down, so it's bit into the blade, we have these ramps here which are actually holding this, which are holding this in place as this charges energy. And now notice how we grab them in the back here because they're, they're down. And since this is held in place, it's holding these ramps here for these little conditional components. So as I pull, notice how it's grabbing these arms, and those arms are riding those ramps, pushing the locks out of the way, and now it wants to actually, well, hold on a second, out of the way, and now it's unlocked it. So see how it, the blade is able to be free? And then it's gonna throw it forwards. So now, once again, we have to analyze the system, how it operates with the charged side versus the uncharged side. So we can see how the charged side is gonna unlock the locks, but again, for the uncharged side, we have to let the locks be free to move so they can bite into the blade once it is ejected, because we don't want it to bounce back. So that's when the arms behave differently when it's uncharged, because once again, this whole mechanism is predicated upon the fact that the side that's charged is gonna be separated. They're gonna be two separate components, and the side that's not caught onto the blade is moving freely together. Since this one moves freely together, it's gonna pull these things back but they're not gonna unlock the locks because this is not in the way to push them inwards. Notice how this pushes them inwards when it's here, but it doesn't do that when it's here. Therefore, the blade can fly forward and lock without being impeded like it is here. Now the cycle's gonna swap. It's gonna be this side, and this side's gonna be the one that's gonna depress. It's gonna lock down. It's gonna grow outwards. This is gonna pull this. It's gonna unlock the lock. It's gonna throw it back. It's gonna fly past this one. And that's how it operates forward and back and accomplishes all that behavior in this single, extremely small profile. So I hope this build made sense. There's certainly a lot going on with these complicated mechanisms, especially since the behavior of each part changes depending upon the state that it's in. So they behave differently when it's ejecting versus the side that's receiving the blade and vice versa. And then the mechanism has to take that same pull string action and convert it to an alternating action for ejection and retraction. But if you have any questions or I didn't describe something particularly well, definitely drop a comment or question below. I love seeing your comments and questions and I'm always happy to respond to those. And if there's a trend emerging there where it just becomes apparent that I didn't describe something well enough, then I can make a you know Instagram Reels, TikTok, YouTube short, something like that to really go over that component or that piece of this mechanism that maybe I left out that I didn't realize. But all the models for this are up on Patreon and they've been up there for quite a while and I do include the source blender files there as well. So if you wanna tweak this, make it your own using other models, you totally can. It is $12 for the access there. I wanna be very clear that I'm not doing that for profit. I have a lot of materials that I go through, you know, axles, pins, springs, chipsets, electrical components, filament, all those sorts of materials that I go through in great quantities as I rip through all these prototypes and chuck them in the trash, basically. But then, of course, most of my design sessions are in coffee shops, so I spend a fair bit on coffee every month as I go through all those hours designing things. Where here is where I go to actually build the things, 3D print stuff, test how they work, and all of that. But anyways, um, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this episode, and I will We'll see you next time.